What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So it's that time of the week. It's time for the weekly rotation, and we got some variety this week. We've got a brand new release that I was excited to get. We've got some newer stuff to the collection, some stuff that I'm revisiting, but all of it minus one. And even that's still pretty fresh, but we got a lot of fresh stuff here, a lot of very, very appealing fragrances, to say the least. Uh, some reachbacks. Some stuff that just just amazing additions to anyone's collection. It's week number 192 in the week of rotation. 191 to 192 weeks strong at this point. It's crazy to think. Let's discuss it. Stay tuned. Starting off on Sunday, I just did a full review on this one. It is supposedly a Mega Mare clone. I've never smelled Mega Mare, but I gotta tell you, if you like salty, musky fragrances, you will like Paris Corners, The Chaos in the Ocean. This stuff has really good performance, and Broxen, Seaweed, Musk, Dominate, Cologne, Dominate this fragrance. Very clean, aquatic, like I said, very musky and salty. You gotta like that. You gotta like it. And it, I get every bit of eight plus hours in longevity on my skin. It's very strong. According to my wife, for sure. Very strong of the first few hours off of my skin. Uh, it does have a more synthetic smell. The opening was an adjustment for me because it's so sharp and smells chemical, but it's just that sharp. It doesn't necessarily smell cheap. You know, I, it's the first time you smell it, it's going to come across that way, but... When you get to know it a little bit, you can understand it a bit more. And that's kind of what I've come to learn about this fragrance. If you want some more information beyond this, definitely check out my full review. But starting things off during the day on Sunday, Saltwater Aquatic. It's called A Chaos in the Ocean from Paris Corner. And then I got the shower. It was time for a shave. So I reached for my Sphinx Beard Shave Set. This is called Caribbean Island. It is a take on Virgin Island water, as you would expect. And I gave myself a few sprays of Tommy Bahama Set Sail St. Bart's for women. So this still has that margarita on the rock smell of the men's version with a little bit more sweet and breezy florals to it. There's even the sand accord. I couldn't tell you how accurate it is, but it smells really tropical and really, really good and really fit the vibe of going with something that smells like Creed's Virgin Island water and aftershave splash, which you got to gotta make sure to shake it up see the difference so gotta shake it up it's really good on skin this combination was phenomenal guys not all women's fragrances are too feminine for guys to wear this is a joy on a super hot day and then obviously we were out the shower here but nice and fresh nice and breezy a little bit of tequila some lime and some florals it was really working out the shower had a good shave with sphinx beard caribbean island and tommy bahama set sail st bart's for women Moving into Monday, so I actually did not wear anything out the shower this day, but during the day I was enjoying this one. It started kind of a hyped line for me from an independent perfume house. Uh, so much so, it got so much attention that he ran a poll on his Instagram asking if he should bring it back, and 93% voted yes. So it looks like we might be getting the original Summer Vibes back from Authenticity Perfumes. So what's different about this one? It does smell like the second version, the lime green label. That's more intense than this and not as earthy green. So there's a cannabis note in here and you get more of it in the original. It's still soapy, still citric, uh, very aromatic, breezy aquatic. Uh, it's not as sharp and like I said, not as intense. The second version is much stronger, but that earthiness is toned back greatly. This is good stuff. Always has been a soapy aromatic with a variety of citruses like tangerine and lime, for example, lavender, and like I said, the cannabis note, most notably. Stands out here, offers this earthy green feel. Doesn't really smell like marijuana, not all that much to me. It's got this distinctive earthy green leafy feel to it, though. Uh, and performance is still really good, even though it's not as intense of a smell as Summer Vibes 2.0. It's still a very strong fragrance. It's still a 50% oil concentration. Bright and breezy as you would expect. So glad to see that there's a real good possibility it's coming back so some of you can experience it that have never tried it. But during the day, 
the original summer vibes from Authenticity Perfumes. Moving into Tuesday, I'm currently working on a collaboration review to do here on this channel with my buddy Chad from A Gentleman's Journey. So I started doing some more testing on one of the best watery Clementine fragrances I've ever smelled. This is from Atelier Cologne. This is Clementine, California. Very, very watery fresh. Orangey, limey smell, a little bit of green herbal tones, but super watery and fresh. I'm very much impressed. This is so good on a super hot, humid summer's day. About four hours is all I really get from it. That's cool. It's all good. I totally understand what I'm going into with this house and their freshies. You're paying for naturals here, and you're getting the ex said experience, because as you can see right here, whenever it will focus, 92% of ingredients of natural origin. So photorealistic type of stuff, a dry black pepper smell, a little bit of, I believe basil's the green note here, that offers a touch of green spice, and it sounds like it might be really spicy, but there's such a watery feel to this. Really not all that spicy, a little fresh and spicy, but the Clementine definitely dominates this. A little bit of an orange feel with it. With the Clementine comes across like lime. This is so good. Even a little touch of florals here and musky. Clean. Super clean, but a little musky. Uh, this is one that I would encourage you to try. The house is great. I have four fragrances from them now. None of them disappoint. This is one, number two. Pacific Lime, I think, is my favorite. But this kind of runs neck and neck with Orange Sanguine for the second and third spot with Pomelo Paradise surprisingly coming into the four hole. But when you're number four out of four incredible fragrances, it really all that bad. But Clementine, California, it's definitely worth trying. Perfectly unisex. I think everybody can enjoy this during the day. That's what I went with. And then we got the shower. This is a channel favorite that when it comes to talking about super affordable under $30 fragrances, this is one of the first that comes to mind. It is Vince Camuto Ohm my favorite Vince Camuto fragrance. So this is a gin and tonic fragrance done right. Crisp, spicy, juicy and fresh. Immense performance in the first hour. It's really strong. My sillage is dense, thick and bright in the first hour. Then it calms down and you get light whiffs of it for about five to six hours is what I experience in longevity with this. 100 mLs go for around 28 to $30 from discounters online. 20 bucks will get you at 50 mL like I have. Had this bottle for a while. Not a huge dent, but enough. Enough of a dent. Um, I love this fragrance though. This is a consistent recommendation when it comes to super affordable on this channel. I've featured it pretty much every year in the four years that I've had it on this channel because it's that good, guys. If you haven't tried it yet, you really should. Out the shower, Vince Camuto Ohm. Moving into Wednesday is a brand new release from Wilhelm Parfumery. It is called Faces of Francis. So this one surprised me. So Twisted Lily had reached out to me to see if I was interested in taking part of the launch of this fragrance. Gave me a little bit of information about it, and I was like, ooh, okay, this is different. We've got notes like... I can tell you right now, a lot of aldehydes and saffron. Grilled pistachio, oud, cypriol oil, driftwood, odd combinations, right? Styrax, just musk. A little all over the place, vetiver and such cypriol oil with all of that. And it's not quite all that earthy. A little smoky, spiced and leathery, metallic, a little lactonic, super fresh while still being warm in the opening. The top's literally aldehydes and saffron. Very much impressed by this one. Really good performer, not a beast, but above average performance. I would call it a very strong fragrance for the most part. That's versatile enough to wear every day. The grilled pistachio kind of takes over as it settles in and offers this light creaminess to the fragrance with the woody tones that you can expect. The oud funk, you get a little bit of funk at the beginning, but it fades quickly. You can barely tell there's any oud in here. It can't be much. But I'm super impressed by this. This is definitely one of the best niche releases I've tried this year. This is top three niche for me of this year's releases that I've tried. Not saying it's top three overall because I haven't tried everything. I don't get my nose on everything. I try to do my best, right? But this, phenomenal. Super impressed. Uh, performance. I took a shower having had it on at eight hours. And... I mean, it is what it is. I, I can't clock it beyond that yet because I sprayed it kind of early afternoon for a live stream. 
for the first impressions. So at the eight hour point, it was still going pretty strong for me. It wasn't overwhelmingly strong, but it damn sure wasn't a skin scent. So I can tell you at minimum, eight plus hours of longevity with, I would consider it more on the moderate side of sillage and moderate to heavy type of projection. So, so far so good. I'm digging this. More to come, more information from me as I wear it more. But during the day, the new release from Wilhelm Parfumery called Faces of Francis. Then I got the shower, a Hype Beast Cheapy Classic, Antonio Banderas, Puss and Boots, the voice of Puss and Boots, Blue Seduction. So this is kind of a must-have cheapy, is how you can look at it. Yeah, why, why the hell not? I mean, it took me forever to get my hands on it, though I've smelled it a bunch of times over the years. But right now on Amazon, you can get a 30 ml for $19. I mean, a, not a 30 ml, 200 ml for $19. You can spray away. So what if it lasts three or four hours? Spray away, get a 200 ml for $19. $15. It's actually cheaper than the 100 ml right now, believe it or not. And it smells great. A little bit of cappuccino and melon. It smells kind of like Versace Mano Fresh with these richer nuances to it. Performs weaker than, but is also cheaper than. You can, I can totally understand why this has been hyped and so well appreciated as a phenomenal cheap fragrance over the years because it is that. It's a phenomenal cheap fragrance. Out the shower, Antonio Banderas. Blue Seduction. Moving into Thursday, so travel day. It is draft season, fantasy football season. And it was time for my annual trip back to my hometown in Louisiana. So for the car ride from Florida, I went with Ferocity from Alexandria Fragrances, which is a beastly clone of Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. Pretty much a carbon copy. Smells exactly like it. And is crazy strong. You want performance? You want the synthetic nature of the actual Abercrombie fragrance because if you want crazy performance and a higher quality smell, you can get Parfums de Marle, uh Percival. It really is the ultimate when it comes to the Fierce DNA. But this smells like actually Fierce, just way stronger. So it has that, that much more synthetic tone to it, that sharp, almost cheap, Fierce smell. Fierce doesn't smell of high quality. It never did and never has and never will. This matches it. Like, this is a true clone right here. It matches it. Just cranked up concentration and performance. It's an extract to parfum. I don't know the exact oil concentration. It's at minimum 25%. I'm sure it's a little bit higher. It goes and goes and goes. 12 hours easy. This is a long-lasting fragrance. Great sillage. If you're a fan of the DNA, like my wife is a huge fan of this DNA, you will get plenty of wear out of this. You don't need many sprays, just like with Percival's, like a three or four spray fragrance. Same thing here. You sacrifice some of Percival's quality. Don't get me wrong, that's synthetic too, but it smells like a higher quality modern synthetic fragrance than Fierce and this. But for less money, you can't go wrong here. During the day was Ferocity from Alexandria Fragrances, and the only out the shower fresh fragrance I brought with me for the trip, so this is going to be the remaining three days, is the discontinued Sean John 3 a.m., one of the greatest cheap freshies of all time that is no longer cheap. Um, unfortunate, prices have skyrocketed, so I believe it's discontinued. A bunch of people told me it is. I don't know for certain, but I wasn't going to spray a ton of it. Why? I can still smell it with a light spritz. It's a pressure, oh, what the hell? It's pressure sensitive. Look at that. The best atomizer ever has been retired, sadly. Retired. But citrus, crisp gin and tonic, a woody, slightly bitter fig leaf smell with some soft leather. Beautiful fragrance. Average at best performance. A little less, a little bit weaker than that. Four to five hour range in longevity for me with an hour projection. I've always been good with it. I have another bottle. This isn't my only bottle. But one of the greatest cheap fragrances of all times. Out the shower for all three days. Sean John, 3 a.m. Moving into Friday, a new addition to the collection, the newest rendition of Chrome. I'm starting to do some testing for a review. It's Chrome Parfum, very green, like resinous green, much greener than I anticipated. It does dry into a little bit of a metallic smell, but just a touch, like Chrome, Chrome's in there, but it's not heavy. This has got more of an earthy gr green feel than I ever anticipated, like I thought, it was just going to be maybe a richer take on the Eau de Parfum because that has more of a piney green feel. 
No, this is much more earthy. Surprised me quite a bit. It's kind of like elegant chrome in many ways. It's very refined. It's matured. It's, like I said, that earthy tone to it kind of changes the game. Performance is great. It's not overwhelmingly loud, but it lasts a really long time. I, I clocked it at 10 hours before I took a shower. Lasts a really long time. And the sillage lingers. This one hangs out. This has a moderate sillage. I'm impressed by it. It's not an everyday wear for me. It's a little bit more situational than I hoped it would be, but it's still something to appreciate. This is good stuff. If you like earthy yet metallic, because that metallic aquatic citric feel that's always been in Chrome's DNA is still here. It's just in the background. It's not at the forefront. The earthy green resinous fur balsam feel is, but man, it's still some good stuff. During the day, my first full wearing of Chrome Parfum. Then we got the shower. Like I said before, it's every night the rest of the way. Sean John, 3 a.m. Nothing else to say about it that I haven't said already, but out the shower, 3 a.m. Finally on Saturday, draft day. So I need long-lasting performance. I don't want to have to bring my bottle with me to refresh at any point. Not that any of my buddies even give a shit what I'm wearing. They're not into fragrances like that, though all of them do wear fragrance. They're not into it like I am, obviously. They don't really give a shit. And it's all good in the hood. I totally understand. But I wanted something fresh, something for me to enjoy all day long. I decided Mancera Lemon Line was that fragrance. I haven't been wearing it. I recently talked about it in a Mancera video. It made me want to bring it with me and wear it. Sharp lemon that dries into a lemon heads candied lemon and some woods. Man, I love this stuff. <sighs> so good. God, if you like lemon in your fragrances, you must try this. So powerful too, lingering in the air. It just kind of engulfed the airspace right here. This is so good, guys. So good. It's it's all I smell. Every breath in is lemon. Sharp, dense, fresh cut. Like five lemons just got cut right in front of my nose. That type of just a lot of it and thick, you know? It's so good. You can wear this year round. The performance is there. It's a little bit for the, you know, a little much for the super high humid heat, but it's not all that bad. That's what I wore it in. I mean, we were inside most of the time, but we kept going outside. It's that jam. This is one that I encourage you to try from the house. It's a nine out of 10 fragrance for me. This is outstanding. Simplistic, nothing complex and deep about it, but performance is great and it smells phenomenal. In my opinion, the best lemon fragrance out there during the day. Mancera lemon line and then once again got home that evening to my mom's and stayed at my mom's for the draft like I normally do Sean John 3 a.m. and like I said we covered it all already and that was a wrap on week number 192 well that was it that was this week's rotation and until next time do me a real quick favor go ahead and like comment subscribe I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys any of you happen to by chance wear any of these this week was it just me only me Somebody else, doesn't have to be the same day, like somebody wear Chrome Parfum this week or happen to get their hands on the new faces of Francis. This is phenomenal. Get a sample, five bucks from Twist Lily. Get a sample and try this damn thing. I'm impressed by it. Slightly unique, doesn't smell like anything else I have. Enjoyable, masculine, long lasting, strong without being overwhelming. It smells like you can wear it for everything. That's captivating for me. I love the versatile fragrances. And we got many of them in this video for sure. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the fragrances I wore in this past week's rotation, and you give them a spray now, there's always a pretty good chance, at least I think so anyways, that you might thank me later. Have a good one, guys.